this was what you call pure D gangster chess. And we're going to take a look at it. You're going to say, well, why is it gangster chess, Maurice? Why, why do you say that? Well, the reason I say that is because it had some of the features that we see, we have discussed over the last couple of months. If you have been following this stream, you know I've been discussing some of these themes. And some things happen in this game. You go, does that happen in real chess games? Nah, come on, Maurice. You know it doesn't really happen in real games. It, this, all the studies you show and, and all of that. Well, it does. Bottom line. That's what happens. It happens in real games. And we're going to see it happen in this game. I'm going to show you the points where people have shown stuff on this stream. And people go, nah, this is not a real position. This, this is not realistic. Chess, everything you look at in chess is good. Everything you look at in chess can happen and we are going to see it happen in spades in this game multiple things we've done on this stream will come about and i like to show the exceptions i like to show the outliers because you never can tell and it happened in this critical game between jordan van Foris and niels grandilius let's get right to it e4 c5 a knight off jumps on the board with a6 we've seen the knight off take it on the chin in this tournament bishop g5 is one Big test we've seen. But in this very specific game, as we said, his second said, let us try something different. And it was this move. Queen d3, an offbeat move to be sure, bringing the queen up to the third rank, possibly to be able to swing over. But it does expose that queen early. Haven't we been taught, don't bring your queen out too soon. Bring your other pieces out. Well, this move is an exception that they tried. Knight B to D7, the knight's going to attack the queen with tempo and hit the pawn straight up and right away. And now bishop to E2. Why don't you play bishop E2 before? No, just go right for it. Amazing. By the way, one thing about this move is what I like about the queen on D3, although I can't say I love the queen on D3, is how it just frees everything. The bishop will roll out and the queen will already be on an aggressive square. But let's just take a look at how it went down. A4, B5. Sorry, b5, a4. Now knight c5, queen to e3. And now this move, b4, asking the question, what's the deal? What if I take this pawn? What if I take the pawn? It's a pawn. What's the deal? What do you got? And to see a pawn drop, and we've talked about this. Let's start with the first thing we talk about on the stream. What did Petrosian say about this, about sacrifices? We talked about it on the very last stream. When you make a real sacrifice, when you make a real sacrifice, you play as though you sacrificed, not as though you lost material. Pure and simple. You play as though you sacrificed. So it's not like he's thinking, how do I win the pawn back? No, he's thinking, I want space. You know, I'm not interested in no stinking pawn back. That's not what this opening is about. That's not what this novelty is about. That is, you understand? If you're scared to lose material, you can't play real chess. You cannot play gangster chess, that's for sure. But you cannot play real chess. You've got to say, it's a pawn. I'm playing for space. I'm playing for squares. You better find all the right moves if you're going to deal with this. So Grandilia said, okay, this looks good. You know, I'm going to play solid. I'm up a pawn right now. I'm up a pawn. Let's play solid. But look at that queen that's centralized. Look at that nice that's centralized. And look at this pawn on a5. It's isolating this pawn on b4. And it's also keeping this pawn under wraps. So this is pure positional. Pure positional whatever. You took my center pawn at that, but I've got some space. You got to play accurately now. So castles, bishop to d7, bishop to d2, kind of eyeing this pawn, but not because he's that interested. And now bishop to f3. And now the game is starting to build. White is expanding. White's pieces are on active squares. And now the final run, drop the queen back, will possibly capture the knight. That's a possibility to wreck... The pawn structure a little bit. But that's not what he was really interested in. And here his opponent played the move. Queen to b8. Oh, I should also point out, by the way, there's a potential knight f5 in the building. That's another one. Because if you take, then the knight's dropping. So all sorts of little nasties are possible. And here's where it comes. And we're going to see the second thing that comes on this stream after the move. B4, a c4, excuse me, chasing the knight and taking. And now there's the threat of c4. And there's going to be an exchange that drops. So we see rook to a7. And now, for those of you who bid on the stream, rook to b1. There's been a rook b1 sighting. Move 19 already. Let's get it started on the b line. You know when that starts, the, the, the energy starts to pop up. 
So that's number two that we've talked about on the stream. It's, <laughs> trust me, all of it's going to happen in this game. Just about everything we talk about. Are you ready? Queen C8, C4, get the knight out of here. And now the knight drops back. And now for the next move, all right? We've seen already the quick pawn sacrifice. So what? We're playing like Petrosian dictates. We've seen the rook be one siding. What is the next thing we see? This is just a beautiful move. Knight to B5. Hello, wake up. Pawn can take. We put a knight on a protected square. You know how much I love moves where you put a piece on a protected square. You know I love those moves. Those are the moves that are difficult to see. Hitting the rook. Rook is trapped. Nowhere to go. You're going to lose an exchange if you don't take the knight. But when you take the knight, we've been talking about pawns, connected past pawns. I've been running that theme, and I have another game to show you later. Yo, I saw a game today that completely blew my mind, like explosion. Like, I can't believe this game was ever played. Wait till you see the game I prepare for you later on this stream. But look at this. Connected passers protect rooks be belong behind pass pawns. How about two rooks behind two pass pawns? You know this has to be good for white right now. This has just got to be sweet. All right. Absolutely lovely. Grandilius understood. These, these puppies are going. <laughs> They're going fast. All right. They, one of them has to die now. That's got to go. You, that's got to go. That, that, they get to the sixth rank. They were at the rook. They get to the seventh. They were at the queen. The one's got to go now. Just got to go. You got to go. Off, off the board. Get, get away. Had to. Anything else doesn't make any sense. Queen takes. Now we have a position where black is ahead by a pawn. But nobody cares about these stinking pawns. It's all about this, Joey. I mean, this guy is rough. You need to play now. And probably the right way to handle this was the move d5. Try to block out this bishop. Block it out. Keep it out of the game. Instead, he played knight to d7. And now he's going to get punished. Bishop to b7. Normally, you don't see bishops in the heart of the enemy position. We're going to see an unusual idea like this later. But bishop to b7, queen d8, and now a6. Look at that rook. Look at that rook. I mean, <laughs> this is pure chessboard geometry. You never get your rook trapped like this. You see it in studies. You see it when it happens to you when you're a beginner. It doesn't happen to you as a stone cold gangster GM. Niels Grandilis is looking at his rook and going, uh, how did this happen? <laughs> this is a bad day at the office. When something like this happens to you, your rook is buried by a pawn and a bishop. This just never happens. Again, in studies maybe, maybe when you're a weaker player, but not at this level. So bishop to f6, try to attack the rook. Uh, he said, it doesn't matter. You're down a rook right now. So let's just get it on. Let's go. Queen over, bishop to c7. Another pure D gangster move. I love this bishop double bishop placement. Again, you would see this in a study. I know some of y'all, the skeptics out there. Oh, Maurice, come on. Why are you showing this kind of crazy position? Bishops on the seventh rank. That never happens. That's not real. That doesn't happen in real games. Folks, I'm telling you, you've got to watch the exceptions in chess. You've got to look at things that never happen. Because sometimes they do, for one thing. And second of all, Anything that's possible on the chessboard is worth noting. And I'm going to show you some things today that are really, 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 like insane. Just completely insane. But bishop to c7, boss type move. Bishop takes, yes, yeah, so what? These bishops are easily worth the rooks. Easily. And bishop d6 is coming. This rook looks ridiculous. Bishop b6, in fact, could come at any time as well, depending on what your next move is. He said, all right, look, I'm just giving back the exchange. You can have one. You can have an exchange. Please get off of my back, please. Queen to d8. You can have my rook. Go ahead. No, I don't want your stinking rook. Look at my pieces. Nobody cares about that rook. You can keep it. You want to move your rook? Go right ahead. Nobody cares if you make a move like this one. He's just cool, calm. You know how cool and calm that is to say, I'm just moving my rook over. I'm, I'm relaxing. 
I'm putting pressure on you. I'm just going to keep applying more and more pressure. That's just, that's cool, calm, dare I say, gangster type chess play. G6, go ahead. Take my rook. No, I do not want your rook. Cool, calm. Let me stop. The ch you know who plays chess like this? Gary Kasparov plays chess like this. Anatoly Karpov plays chess like this. This is the kind of baller this young man is. He doesn't care about anything in this position. By the way, just to say after G6, rook to C8 is a move until you see queen takes land on the board. You try to get greedy. Let me get greedy. And the guy says, oh, thank you so much for the Please, thank you so much for changing the whole position around. And all of a sudden, you just got nothing. nothing. What happened to your beautiful advantage? You won the queen. I won the queen, guys. Oh, no. He took it. <laughs> Downhill after that. It's not about winning back material or trying to. It's about the squeeze. It's about the positional pressure. This is a high-level game. Just at the highest order, y'all. This is how you play 2,700 chess. Maybe even 2,800 chess. The move H3. And now rook to E8 trying to keep it. And how many white pieces are going to park themselves in black's position? I mean, park. It's, it's like, do, did they get validation? Uh, could we, but, but, bellboy, could, could you please? Um, yeah, you know, I need validation. Like, dude, he didn't. He doesn't have. He doesn't have a validation team. How is he parking all these pieces in the guy's garage? Like, I'm in. I'm in. I'm just there. What do you? Let's not neglect the a six pawn and the queen. Like every everybody except. I mean, look at this king on the other side, like smiling, like laughing. These 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 got to stay home. Everybody who could be down board in the other half of the, or not only in the other half, in the other quadrant, this quadrant right here, all of Wise Pieces decided that this was the garage they wanted to hang out in. Like, you know what? I got a Mercedes. You know, I got a Lexus right here. I got a Lambo right there. There's my Bentley right there. You know what I'm saying? And this is just a Corvette. This is a Corvette. It's just a speedster ready to go down the bar. I mean, what the heck? <laughs> we just parked. We just parked. Don't worry. Don't mind us. We just parked. All right. This is ridiculous having these great pieces. So now knight f6 attacking the, the bishop, you know, potentially take. No, no, no. Don't even try it. Come on. Get out of here. We're keeping that piece. And now knight to e4. And he said, well, let me get a little closer. <laughs> Let me get a little close. Let me threaten a little rook into your house even more. Okay, well, rook to, rook to f8, hiding. And now let me slide backwards. Let's discuss your rook over here now, okay? Let's just have a little discussion. And now queen to b8. Yeah, you want me to take the rook so you can play queen takes and have a little energy? No, we don't care about your rook that much that's not what we're after in this position what we want you to do is move the knight away somewhere random so we can play queen to b6 and take that rook from you straight that's just nasty that's just evil evil so his opponent got desperate rook takes on a6 he's gonna lose his rook anyway let's get some counter spagagle with queen to b4 and now the game changes in nature and I love this finish. Look at this fantastic finish. But white has to wrestle because black is a star. Black is a strong player. He's not just going to sit there. Look at this finish, y'all. Bishop to e5, the most accurate move, taking control of a very important diagonal. You don't want to have any perpets on that diagonal. Queen to e1, checking out king to h2. As we said, the diagonal is covered. But now knight to f2. He's trying to swing. Sure. Let me see if I can swing. Let me see if I can hit him. There will be no hitting. There will be no hitting. Sorry, let's chase, let's chase this piece away. And now king to g3. The king is in front of the pawns. The king was just chilling a moment ago, but he won a rook. Now he's in front of the pawns. All right? Okay. Well, trying to get a little action in desperation. And now rook to c8, no problem. Ready to trade off the rooks. 
bring the queen in there with the bishop on e5, you know it's going to be mate any second. It's desperation time. And now knight to h1 with check. Now, when I show studies where the knight is in a corner somewhere, how did that knight get in that corner, Maurice? That knight, come on, this is not a real chess position. This is not realistic. No, I never see knights in corners on the other side of the board. I've shown studies like that on this stream. That's right. And that, you, you feel me? Don't ask about whether or not it's possible. You can, yeah, it's, you see it right in front of you. You see it right in front of you. Okay? This is what I'm talking about. Now, king to h4 and time for the king mark. Check. And now g5 with check. Trying to get some flavor flavor in the position. And king takes on g5. And now f6 with check. Hoping the bishop will leave the diagonal so he can get his punches off. No, not today. Not today. King to h6, like the Nigel Short king walk, where he walked all the way to h6 against Timon and did the do. Did the mating do. Beautiful. Now, when you see kings up the board, I've shown those on the stream, those of you who followed me. Well, how did king get all the way up there, Maurice? You see it right in front of you. This is how it works. This is the kind of thing that's possible on the chessboard. That's why we look at everything. We look at st crazy studies, crazy possibilities, because they happen in real games. If your imagination will take you there. I'll take you there. Huh, man. That's what I'm talking about. Your imagination will take you to strange places if you look at these kinds of possibilities beforehand. Yeah, I can do things like this. I've seen it before. If you've never seen it before, you're not marching your king up to h6. You're terrified. You're terrified. But if you've seen it before, you go, I've seen stuff like this before. You could do it. You could get it done. You could get it done. No problem. All right? No problem. Absolutely. F takes e5. And now queen takes on e5. What did we like about this position? The threat is not just mate. But also, queen to h8 check. That's spicy. We call that spicy double threat in this position. Queen to h8. So after king takes, rook takes his mate. Also the queen g7 mate problem. And if you decide to stop the mate with queen takes on g3, you stop both threats, in fact, because your queen not only guards g7, but can go back to g8 in this position. Well, white just plays queen takes with check. Your king shifts to the corner, and now we've got two ways. This way, the boring way, just made them multiple, too bad. Or, if you actually had the position, you should play queen f6 and show off. Just show off them skills. Like, you didn't resign? I got to embarrass you. <laughs> I got to embarrass you. He didn't resign. He didn't, he didn't resign. Look what I just did. This is what I did. Come, look. Come. Look what I just did. He didn't resign. That's, that's how it goes down. All right, game over, done. Of course, your man did resign right here after queen takes, realizing that the game is over. Extraordinary winning position. Look at this chess position. What is this? A king on h6 and a knight on h1. These should be reversed. The king is supposed to be here and the knight here. How is it that you reverse the position, put the king down the board and the knight on h1? This is a real chess game this was extraordinary. And with this win, he tied. He caught Anish Giri at the tape. Anish was trying to, and all of a sudden, right next to him. Hey, looking over your shoulder. What's up, my man? Ran Fidum. Thank you so much. Ran F Dum. I like that. Thank you so much uh, for the generosity. Much appreciated. Just an extra. Just. just Crazy, beautiful. This final position, you go, wow. Now, they're crazier games we've shown on this stream. We're going to show, a, oh my gosh, the game I'm going to show you later, you're going to say, no way that was a real chess game. And there's a plot twist at the end too. You guys, the last stream, I had a big plot twist. The game I'm going to show you at the end of this stream, the plot twist is going to be ridiculous. The last stream, I had a plot twist that I showed this amazing game in the dragon, like sick, psycho, crazy game. And, whoa, throw Yonkers, what game is this? This was the game that got Von Foris the tie against 
with 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 uh, Anish Giri, he beat Grandilius in the last round. But yes, indeed. Hey, Michiko, what's up? What's up? I know you might not get your sleep, but hey, that's what I do. That is exactly what I do. You make sure you are doing what you need to do because this is about spinning your brain around. When I'm done, I don't want anybody's brain to be normal. All your, you know, it's got, got to be all mixed up. Speaking of mixed up, I don't even know what I was talking about just now, but I just saw generosity there. Thank you so much. Much appreciated. As usual, you guys are way too nice to me. Now, why doesn't Queen D2 work? Queen D2 don't work because, uh, you know, it don't work. That's why. That's why. It's a, that's why it doesn't work. And Induced is back with the generosity, gifting five tier one subscriptions to the community. You're doing good work, sir. Much appreciated. Now, I was talking about, thank you. Thank you. Alakine is paying attention. You know, Alakine definitely pays attention. I've seen you before. Yes, I'm talking about that crazy game, the dragon. At the end, we saw the magnificent moves, the crazy chest, the rook c3 move, the king a1 monster king sidestep, like insanity. And then at the end, I told you all the plot twist was that it was an under 12 game, that it was two 11-year-olds, maybe even a 10-year-old in the mix playing in that game. And we were like, what the heck? This extraordinary game, and they are that young, right? Yes. Well, this game I'm going to show you at the end of the stream will feature that plot twist. Not that plot twist, but a different plot twist. You're going to say, no way, no way, no way, no way that this happened. All right. So incredible stuff going on. At any rate, this is the game that got him tied for first. Now, you've got to feel some kind of sorrow for Anish Giri. Here he has been the pride of the Netherlands for so many years, clearly taking over the mantle from Jan Timmen as one of the top GMs from the Netherlands in the world. Literally the pride of the Netherlands. He's taking it on the chin about how he draws a lot of games. And yet he's placed near the top of his country's elite event time and time again. Then he ties with Magnus a couple of years ago, or at least 2018, he ties with Magnus and in the past, they would have been joined first. He would have been considered a co-winner. That would have been headlines. What happens? No, no, not today. They play playoffs now. Magnus beats him in a playoff. Then he does all the work he does for this event. Then he's virtually guaranteed it when he's beat. He's bashing the young Aller Reyes in an endgame and throws away a critical pawn and only draws the game. He could have just won the tournament with a round to spare, basically. It would have been over. And what happens? The last game he was suffering, by the way. He might not even have made it to the tie break, but he defended heroically, and he ends up tying for first. And now he gets to play a playoff against a good friend and somebody who looks up to him, by the way. Anish is young, but babyface gangster Jordan is 21. Anish is like 26 now. Still young, but... He had a youngster who's like five years younger who's, who's analyzing with him, who's like, oh, a little teenager, you're cute, you're cute, you're coming up in the chest. How nice, <laughs> how nice. Let me show you some stuff. And what happens? That youngster who you show some stuff comes back and says, I'm taking the title you want. <laughs> I got it. Like, what? Why well, I should never show this little kid nothing, man. Why well, I show him anything at all? What the heck? I mean, it's going to get harder to win this tournament. This is not getting any easier. Not with the young gangsters, the Ali Razors, who's pissed off that they told him that he had to move his game. He was in the middle of putting work, doing work to uh, Vitacek. Doing work. He's like, mm, mm, I'm going to hurt this guy. And then the Arbiter comes over and says, um, I know you're playing and all, but um, listen. Could you do us a favor? Because there's a playoffs. You're not even going to be in the playoffs. Even if you win your game, you're, you're, you're going to tie. But the tie breaks, your tie break sucks. So he didn't say this. I'm just, I'm just saying what he was thinking. Your tie break sucks. So what's going to happen is you're not going to be involved in the playoff. Even though you have the same score as these two, you would have the same score as these two guys. Your tie break's terrible. So if you don't mind, we need center stage 
for the real game. Meantime, whatever. Could you just like, would you mind? I'm just saying. I, I understand you're in the middle of your game. I understand. But could you just kind of move over and get out of our way? Yo. <laughs> Yo. If I was out of race, I would have been ticked off too. Like, no, mofo. I'm sitting right here. I'm not going anywhere. What are you, you going to tell me to get up? No. Find somebody else to play your stinking tie break. Instead, he, he got flustered and upset. Whatever. Let's that bother him. Leaves the center stage. Only to know now, it don't matter whatever he does, he's not going to come in first. Ends up drawing the game time for third, and of course he's ticked off. Of course he's ticked off. Listen, right now, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. Ali Reyes is thinking, I'm hurting somebody in this tournament next year. Not even any questions. Chess Optics, thanks for the three-month subscription. I mean, he's thinking, you know what? I'm remembering this nonsense. I'm remembering when I come back, watch what I'm going to do. Watch what I'm going to do. So he's coming back with a vengeance. Jordan Van Faris, I don't know if he's going to play more chess like this. This could have been the tournament of his life or the tournament where he just shows that he belongs. And Fabiano Caruana was quoted as saying, seems to me like he's playing real deal chess right now. It doesn't seem like a fluke. Let's hope it's not. You know, sometimes you go up like this, but you level off and you don't, you don't really jump any higher. So we'll see if he can keep it up. All right. See if he can keep it up. Will he do that? And then there's that Yesipenko character. These little these, these gangsters, they're not going anywhere. They're, they're talking about one of us is on the rise. One of us is going to be knocking on y'all door. Maybe it's all three of us. Hello, um, we want to be in on this party. You guys with the Grand Chess Tour and all your elite events. We want to be in on the party. You see what happens when you put the 2600s in the tournament? Meantime, you only want to put the elite elite. I got you. That's good. That's great. Y'all draw a lot of games, though. But when we're in here, boom, we're hungry. We want to hit you. Great, great idea by these organizers. You know, And I'm a commentator for the Grand Chess Tour. So don't get me wrong. I like seeing the top players, too. But when you see the young blood come in the tournament and be like, mix it up. Let's see what you got. We're young, we're hungry, we're fresh, and this is how they do. All right. Now, you say Yesipenko is not consistent. I don't know that that even the winner you could call him consistent. They're just starting out. They're young. They're young. They have years to mature and get better. All right. They've got years to mature. The real chess news, Maurice, you see the song I did with Tata Steel is the real deal. No, I haven't seen that song. <laughs> the real, the, who is the real chess news? You're a musician, clearly. No, I have not seen that at all. But let, uh, I, I'd be interested though. Tata Steel is the real deal. Is it a reggae beat? Tata Steel is the real deal. You hear me, I say, man? <laughs> all right. The dude is 15. The dude is not. 15, 15, no. 17 for Ali Reza and 18 for Yesipenko. So, and, and now people talking about Dubov is a freak. Dubov is there for sure. You've got, you've got guys like Artemiev who want to make that jump. The young generation, I, I'm going to give them two years before they say, you guys at the top, we're, we need to join this party. Some Two of us need to join the party. All right? To, just a, just a, just need to join the party, all right. That's that's what we're looking at. These youngsters are incredible. But let's take a quick look at the Armageddon game because this game, after Geary had two better positions against his opponent and failed to convert, he got a sweet position in the Armageddon game. For those of you who don't know what Armageddon is, white gets five minutes, black gets four minutes, but black has draw odds, so black has less time. Then white, white has to win the game. Otherwise, white loses the match. So in this position, in this game, uh, I hear you. You say the top players were not there. The top players are usually, usually in the these kind of elite events. But again, I'm arguing, and I think a lot of us believe that the tournament is more entertaining when you have the lower rated players. But here we go. Von Faris has survived two games against Anish. And this is the Armageddon game. And he plays some bizarre theory, the way he retreated his bishop in that position. 
And now a6. And this move, we smell a rat. Takes on c6 and takes on c5 and keeps it going. Just power. Just power. Look at those dark square domination. Just power. And now this move. Something's wrong here because after knight retreat, there is a retreating moves. You know, we talk about that on the stream. Stopping the one break you want, which is c5. That's the break black needs. This bishop is horrible. Absolutely horrible and cannot get in the game. And this is only 16 moves in. Already black is scrambling. Knight back trying to get in c5. Pure prophylaxis. No, you want it. You're not getting it. We will make the point. I made this point as well. You just see the positional teams play themselves out. Back here, I should have talked about it. Right here. Right here, an instructive moment in the game after a6. What is the instructive moment? When white plays bishop takes on c6, all right, let's make this very profound positional point. When, black, when white plays bishop takes on c6, white has conceded a, a, a piece that fights for the light squares, right? The light square bishop. White no longer has a light square bishop. But now black no longer has a knight which is a piece that can control both colors. In this case for white, white knows black has a bishop and a knight remaining and this bishop that he can't really compete against. But white understands that black cannot compete on the dark squares. All right? Black understands that. You cannot, sorry, white understands that. You cannot compete on the dark squares. All right? So since you can't compete on the dark squares, I'm going to now take over the dark squares. I'm going to play everything from this moment playing for the dark squares. So after bc6, dc5, bishop c5, b4, dark square control, bishop to e7, a5, further dark square domination, queen b7, knight back to d3, controlling a key dark square in the position. And also look at that bishop, just a monster on the long diagonal. Knight to d7, trying to get some control of the dark squares. Only these two creatures can fight for the dark squares. This one cannot. Even if it was outside of the pawn chain. Well, you don't want to attack in this knight. But even if it were outside of the pawn chain, this piece could not dominate the dark squares. So what did he do? Knight to b3. Controlling c5. Controlling d4. Look at the lockdown on the dark squares. It's Let me get that diagram right. The lockdown on the dark squares. The dark squares... Trouble. Are you feeling me? That is what we're talking. That's That all came from A6. This one move, and by the way, B6 is weak as well. So one move, A6, has led to absolutely deep positional ramifications based on this one pawn move and a bishop takes knight exchange. If you can play chess like this, folks, you're playing at the high level. Period. This was move 12 was bishop c6. Move 17 is knight b3. And the dark square control from the one exchange masterfully done by Anish. Absolutely masterfully done. So pure desperation now. Queen b5 trying to get this queen somewhere, anywhere. No, back it up. Back, back, back it up. Don't try to come in. You might get trapped on this square to a later knight b2. So don't be crazy. Queen goes back. And now, those of you who watch the stream, all right, those of you who watch the stream, you know. A rook b1 sighting. By the way, what move number is this? I mean, it's just poetry. It could just be poetry. I'm just saying. It's move 19. Rook b1 on move 19. Let's go back to this game for just a moment. For just a moment. When right here, with b6 being a square that you could control, what happened here on move 19? Rook F to B1. This is the game we just went over. Jordan Von Faurice versus Niels Grandilius. On move 19 as well. Rook F to B1 before the knight B5 sighting. What is, what, what is, what is, what is this? Is this like an, an echo? Are we here next? Like, what the deal? You just win the game, Jordan, with the move. Rook F B1 on move 19. And then later, guess who play later? Somebody else says, oh, move 19. Rook F B1 as, I mean, Rook to B1 alone. As well. Rook B1 is a weird move. I, I've never really realized it until we started doing this on the stream. Deep state conspiracy. 
about the jokes there. Indeed, there's something about that Rook B1 move, man. I don't know. When it happens, boy, something weird goes down. <laughs> you got the, yeah, you got elfins. That's funny. That's funny. Rook B1 is a boss move here. Now the dark squares are in full scale lockdown. Michigan, thanks so much for gifting to the stream. This is full scale lockdown. Full scale lockdown, be the change. Thank you and start the hype. Rook B1 once again. I got to do, you know, a Rook B1 emote. That's got to happen. A Rook B1 emote. I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to take care of that, folks. I'm taking care of that. Thank you so much, Justin Carr, for the subscription. Now, thanks to the Snow Show. The Snow Show. Oh my goodness, I left New York a couple of months ago. Grand F them. Thank you for the love, indeed. And J man, you guys are rocking it right now with this Rook B1 move and giving so much love around it. Talk about the snow show. I left New York in December. Level, the hype train got completed right there. Thanks for the gift, Chronic. I left New York in December because, you know, my Jamaican self. I had enough of the snow. I just, I just had enough of this, the snow, all right? Thank you for the cheer, be the change. And today, my son calls me up, FaceTime. Daddy, like, uh, what, what's the deal? What's the deal, son? What's the deal? And he said, Daddy, thanks again, Chronic. He said, um, here's what you're missing. <laughs> he showed me the snow outside. Here's what you're missing. New York is projected to get 18 inches of snow. 18, the East Coast just got blasted. Boom. That is the Northeast Coast. Because me, oh, Maine, you got it hit. You got hit hard. Maine usually gets it harder than we do. All right. Maine usually gets it hit a lot harder than we do. Hold on. I see a little YouTube. Let me save this, the real chess news. I'm going to save that to do at another time for real let me just put it let me just put hold on hold on hold on let me just save that so i can listen to it after the stream don't worry i'll take a look i'll take a look after after the stream i'll definitely get involved get involved get it down get it down so at any rate what i was saying was uh the snow he's like check this out I was like oh really and then i showed him my view which was water <laughs> <laughs> like, uh-uh, no, 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 no. Listen, let me tell you, that's too much snow for me to be dealing with. <laughs> Thank you. Jelly click, jelly, jelly click. Oh, I don't even know how to say that name. Jelly is what I'm going to call you. Jelly subscribing. Thank you so much. But anyway, let's get back to the game because the game was rock, rocking, y'all. Rocking. Let's go. Now, there's no way to get this out, this out, nobody out. So he played the move knight to f6, and boom, boom, boom. Here we come in the dark squares, and a rook b6 sighting parking. We talked about how he was parking in the last game in Grandilius's garage. Well, here's the rook on the square with the park. Get, just let's go. You don't even want to play bishop b7. That's too ugly for words. Plus, the bishop's going to get trapped on this square. Your rook can't even defend it, so everybody's going to gang up on it. So he's like, you know what? You can have the pawn. I'm going to go for mine. And now, queen c2, knight b5, challenging the knight. That's defending the rook. And now, queen, rook to b6. And now, for a moment that Anish Giri will regret for the rest of his playing days. This is a five-minute blitz game. His opponent plays knight to a3. Knight to a3. Now, it's clear. Maybe this was an oversight. The knight's going to go to c4 and chase your rook. But you know, we know all about connected passers. You, you will tell him, take my rook. You want my rook? I double dare you because I'm going to have the same connected passers that you had. All right? that you had in your game pure and simple remember we just we just saw we just saw let's get back to this moment y'all we just saw the young man play knight b5 
All right, Von Farley said, Knight B5, fearless. Go ahead and take the piece. I get my two connected passers and I bash you on the head. Like we, like I said, he was clearly watching the stream because that's all we've been talking about for the last week or so. Now, this is a moment where the queen's going to move, the knight's going to go here and take the rook so we could take back and have two connected passers and school you? You don't even think. You just move your, just queen C3. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. D dare you. I double, I double, triple, dipple dare you. Go right ahead. The guy's not taking the rope. I'm, I'm just, he's not taking the rope. He's leaving that rope alone. Like you, no, I'm just gonna move his knight. But you move your queen. It wasn't that, a, it wasn't only Anisha's next move. That's a bad move. He had a minute and 50 seconds on the clock. His opponent had about 57 seconds on the clock. He had this giant lead on the clock. And Anish sits here. For a minute, a full minute, like for real, a minute on the clock in this position. Look, you, you got to, it's a blitz game. All blitz players know you've got to move. The time is the most important thing, or at least the time is, the time is like a piece. In chess, the time, your clock time is like a full piece. You cannot afford to get it going down. It doesn't matter what happens later. You've got to move. Make a reasonable move and keep it going. Instead, he sat there and sat there. And I was watching Peter Laco and Lawrence Trent, and they were going crazy, especially Lawrence Trent. He was going. Now he's like, move. <laughs> you, 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 you don't play blitz like this. This is such an important game. You don't spend a minute on one move. And John Nunn, in his book, Secrets of Practical Chess, he says this great quote. Long think, wrong think. You spend a long time, it's usually a bad move. It's usually because you don't know what to do, all right? Move the queen. Get, just get it out of there. Move, move the queen. A minute on the clock and play C, howler six, okay? Howler, and instantly after knight takes C, D, seven, he thinks he's attacking two pieces. Knight takes D, four, and suddenly he realized if he takes the bishop... Knights escapes with check. You're not getting any stinking peace. Thanks, G-Bun. I mean, the commentators were going nuts. And suddenly, it became clear after ED4, Bishop D7, that all that gorgeousness, the deliciousness that was White's position, White was up a... Do you remember the days when White was up? Let's go back, since you don't remember. Clearly, some of you don't remember, so I'm going to go back to the days about two minutes, just about three minutes ago. Rook takes c6. Okay, at the moment, I'm up a pawn. But you got your pawn back. And now knight b5. Do you remember the day when this position was just a completely dominant position? Do you, do you remember this? Okay, I'm glad you do. I just had to rewind, all right? And now, them days are gone. <laughs> what? Wait a second. I was, I was doing well. Now all of a sudden, a bishop's going to park itself on b5, never to be chased off that square, and you have zero. You're down a pawn. You need to win this game, and you got nothing. No hay nada, okay? There's nothing. You're busted. You're, well, you're not really busted in terms of you should lose the game. Opposite color bishop here suggests that you should be able to hold. But you're not winning the game. You're not winning anymore. So Anish plays on. I mean, he must have been crying right now. Plus, his time is worse as Von Faris has easy moves. Trade rooks, why don't you? Okay, you're not going to trade. Fine. How do you make progress here? How do you make progress? You got nothing, and I'm just coming forward. That probably was not the best way for Black to do this because he set himself up for a potential mate. But now, trade rooks. We trade in rooks. You have to. No choice. And now, rook up. And now a last little trick. Maybe I get something. No, you don't. Stop it. Bishop back. I mean, rook, bishop, rook over. Get out. Get out. Shift. Uh-oh. Bishops on strong squares. Oh, this was, this was the move. And now in this position. Sorry. I, I missed the important plot twist. In a position where he's doing perfectly fine, where nothing can happen. Move the king up. Why don't you? Nothing can happen. What does he do? Or maybe even king here. There's nothing to worry about here. Black is up a pawn. He just got to shuffle his pieces back and forth. What does he do? 
the extraordinary bishop to b5. Dude, <laughs> this is what happens when your hand starts doing this in time pressure, okay? Allows rook takes e6 in one move. Now, it's still a draw, but what? <laughs> Just gifted, literally gifted the guy the pawn? Why'd you do that for? No reason. I brain farted is what happened. That was called a brain fart. Okay, fine. It's still a draw, though. It's still equal. Let's go. Let's go. Rook to c1. Okay, I got a rook on a good square. Mm, bit up. Check. Okay, chill. We're chilling. We're chilling. Check. Okay, can we win this piece? Oh, he backs up. Check. What you gonna do? Now the king goes backwards. And now g5. It's over. Like, you gotta save something. You don't wanna repeat. You gotta do something. And in this position, black plays rook takes f4. <laughs> like, what? Who? I mean, the Armageddon was insane, and even the strongest players will blunder when the blood is rushing all over their bodies. Give me the piece. Suddenly, Anish went from winning, well, much better, to only drawing, to winning. Stop it. Stop it. Let, let's, be, like, stop it. What just happened? He's up a piece. And now the commentators, Lawrence Trent is, like, getting out of his chair. He's, he's going nuts. Peter can't believe it. It's like, what is going on? Is Anish going to win the tournament now? Takes Rook A7, G4, takes the, and now he's got a pass pawn. G3, wait a minute. The other guy has a pass pawn. So what do you have to do here? You have to, have to, have to play check. You have to have to get your rook back. Have to have to stop this pawn from promoting. You have to have to do that. That's what you have to do. Just go for it. We're going to see a puzzle in this stream. That's going to be all about what you just saw. You saw that? that what you, keep your mind on this because we're going to jump to something very similar. In fact, it's going to be the first puzzle we do. The very first puzzle we do. He's going to talk about stopping a pawn in, when a king can't really get it done. Stopping a pawn like this. I mean, and by the way, it's right around here when Anish, thanks for reminding me, right around here when, I think it was rook takes a6, when Anish knocked over the pieces. Now, I don't know if, I'm pretty sure he didn't press the clock when he knocked over the pieces. I'm pretty sure he didn't press the clock. If he pressed the clock, he's out of there. Like, that's forfeit, you're by. But if he didn't press the clock, if he fixes the pieces, put them back on the squares, then presses the clock, then he's uh, he's fine by the rules. You can knock pieces over as long as you put them everywhere they belong, and then you hit the clock. If you hit my clock with the pieces down, you're get out of here. Not, this is all illegal position. There's no such position as sleeping pieces. There's no, no there's no sleeping chess pieces position. Okay, these are all knocked over. You're out of there. Okay. Now, in this position, g3 gets played. He just needs to keep it airtight and play rook check. Let's just make it clear. You might say, well, why don't you stop that? Stop what? You're not stopping rook c8. Rook c8 is coming. I'm playing this move. What if I play g2? If you play g2, I'm back. We're back. We're up a piece. Eight pawns running. It's game. It's game. What does he do? He wastes a Full tempo playing a completely ridiculous time pressure move. Completely ridiculous move. And now suddenly, G2, and there's no stopping the pawn. I don't care how much time you have on your clock. I'll give you a year. I'll give you a year, and I'll come back. You're still going to lose. Period. Done. Finished. Okay, it's over. Finally, he played this check. And this check, and now his time run out, ran out. But it doesn't matter. Your time can run out. Queen's coming, and you're going to get mated anyway. So it, it did, don't matter. This one's done. This one's done. This is Von Foreest, folks. Sorry, I got to fix that crop with the black pieces. This is Von Foreest. This is the game that he won. The Armageddon game that he won. So it's not, oh, the guy ran out of time. No, he. this is the position on the board when it finally happens. All right? When it finally happens, it's done. It's over. It's finished. 
and that's it that's it that's game all right that's it